All right, Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala. All right, peace be into the nation of Israel. The modern modern day so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Sprechabur Israelites, being Israelite foreigners scattered across the four corners of the earth, including into America, Babylon the Great, the main place for our captivity. But we are the most high, Yahweh chose the people of the nation of Israel. All right, so without further ado, as always, we're going to go ahead and give our praises, glory, infinite honor to our power. All right, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rakakodash. All right, it's our praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only God, Son, Yahweh Shai, and Holy Spirit, who is our strength and our Redeemer, and our light and our salvation. All right, in the Paleo Hebrew, as in ancient Hebrew, I'm a Adamashana, Kapwadium, Ahasuquanium, Shal, Dalawarbaka, meaning double honors to the apostles and elder bishop, Great Millstone, and Shalom honors and salutations to by Yahshua for the 144,000 elected governing body of the House of David, along with the rest of one third elected men of Israel. All right, yep. We got a midweek camp out here in Messiah, New Mexico. All right. And I was going to bring it out to the spirit, you know, uh, open forum, going to go into a few different topics. And uh, Adam Ratazada is just edifying and exhorting for the elect. All right. You got something to start off with. Okay. So you do got something? Kind. Okay. Yeah, right. Right. yeah this is uh, the book of Romans, chapter 10, and uh, verse 3. It says, For they being ignorant of the Most High, Yahweh's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of the Most High Yahweh. Okay, because the righteousness of the Most High Yahweh is, is based off of the true divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, it goes into 1 Samuel 2 and 3, but the mass of the world are marveling after uh, uh, this beast system through the enchantments of Esau, Eden's wine, and fornication, which is that modern day Western philosophy. And this is why today is a prime example of that, where you know you got these reprobates out here, you know, worshiping uh, uh, Satan, all right, through uh, these pagan idols. Okay, through uh, uh, All Hallows Eve, all right, you know, mildly known as Halloween. All right, we had uh, Pope Gregory VI that essentially made this a, a holiday, okay, that, that we're keeping now. You know, lining out that precept in Daniel, you know, it said that the devil looked to change time to laws to uh, Daniel 725. That's why we keep these wicked, the people keep these wicked uh, annual uh, pagan holidays because it's been normalized and sensationalized by the devil, okay. But then they'll rebel against the biblical holidays, all right? Uh -huh. The ones found up, I think, in Leviticus, the 16th chapter. Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, okay? The, the actual uh, uh, holidays, because that word holly, holidays is really holy days, okay? So they rebel against the actual holy days. They say, well, we don't have to do that. That's that's for the Jews. That's what they'll say, all right? So they won't, they'll celebrate Christmas. They'll celebrate Easter. Okay, you got Halloween today, and then you have Thanksgiving coming up in a month. All right, they'll celebrate those uh, uh, false holidays by right, built, uh, built off of pagan idolatry, but then they'll rebel against the holidays that the Lord actually gave us in the words of the Bible as commandments, okay? To sin, not to not to uh, observe these, these different holy days, especially the Sabbath, okay? They profane the Sabbath, all right? They tell you that the Sabbath is either Saturday or Sunday, which the Israelites didn't go by the Gregorian calendar, okay? They went by the lunar calendar, all right, which today actually being... Uh, a double Sabbath because the Sabbath is changing. It started Wednesday, Wednesday evening and Thursday evening, and then it's coming uh, this week. The new moon, uh, tonight the new moon is coming in. All right, so it's going to be Thursday evening and the Friday evening as well. All right, but they profane that. They tell you that it's it's either uh, a Saturday, which is worship of Saturn. Okay, or they tell you that it's Sunday, worship of the sun. This is the precept I got right here in the book of Amos, chapter five, and I'm gonna start at verse 21. It says, "I hate." I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Okay, so the Lord is saying, I, I hate and I despise I, all the pagan holidays and feast days that you that you have dedicated to me. Uh, once, you know, the main one being uh, Christmas, which is specifically forbidden in Jeremiah the 10th chapter. Okay, not to celebrate the customs of the heathens, man, for they are vain. Okay, you know, uh, uh, setting a tree in your house and decking it with silver and with gold. Okay, we know exactly what that's talking about. And the Lord said, I despise those feast days of yours. Okay, verse uh, uh, Amos chapter 5, and now verse 22. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Okay, so, you know, if, if that's, the thing, that's one thing about our people. Okay, uh, because every time you do something in honor of the Lord, that's like a sacrifice, right? But our people, they don't, they don't want to honor the Lord the way that he told them to do. They want to they honor the Lord the way that they want to do it, okay, which is based off of uh, pagan uh, idolatrous practices, man, okay? Uh, Amos 5 and verse 22, that's uh, 23, excuse me. 
Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials, all the singing and dancing. All right, it's all in vain if you're not going to be obedient to the Lord. Amos 5 and 24. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Okay. So that's so that's what the Lord really desires. Okay. He really desires uh, judgment, righteousness, obedience. All right. And all that's gonna that's all a part of the faith of Yahweh Shai. Okay, you got precept? All right, this is St. Mark chapter 7 and verse 6. <clears throat> it says, He answered and said it to them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Heart in the Hebrews law of the mind. We're referring to the mind. And the mind of our people are corrupted, okay, by the enchantments of Esau, Edom's wine of fornication. You know, like go to Bible you can get a, um, Isaiah 29 and 9. Our people are drunk, okay, off of, off of the ways of this world, yeah. okay, because Halloween, case in point, uh, uh, derives back to uh, European culture, man. You know, you had uh, uh, the Druidic priests, and they, they would uh, uh, dress these, uh, uh, they would dress up children in these costumes to entice demons. All right, and that's why they would leave out the so-called trick-or-treats to the, the corn and whatnot, okay, which is actually of crops back then and not candy, okay, and, they, and, and, and this was to supposedly appease the demonic spirits that they would, they, they would entice through necromancy, man, communi communicating with the dead. And that's what New, the Northern Kingdom mainly uh, 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 indulges in around this time of year, man, through that three-day festival, Dia de los Muertos, mainly over there in Mexico, man. You know what I'm saying? They got the, they got the underground uh, satanic altars, you know, including an idol called, they refer to as Adonai, Okay, you know, which which of the which in the Hebrew is out of one meaning Lord and that that demon they call Adonai is like a winged a uh, horned demon Okay, that they refer to as Lord, which is complete wickedness. You see what I'm saying? They got the ofrendas, which is Spanish for all uh, 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 you No know, offerings, you know, which is speak, Freddie speaks about in Isaiah the sixth fifth chapter Okay, and in a reference to the sacrifice to these pagan gods, man yep. And our people justify it because Esau sensationalized it with, with his wine, man. So is that okay. Isaiah 65 and 3? Uh, Khan, Khan. You want me to go ahead and get that? Khan, you can go get Khan. Okay. All right. Bring out the scripture that he quoted in Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, at verse 3. All right. Going into uh, the idolatry. Okay. Isaiah 65, and I'm going to start at verse um, I'm gonna start at verse 2. It says, I have spread out my hands all the day unto rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face that, sa that sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. All right, which uh, it tells you in Hosea, the fourth chapter, okay, that they would, they would, uh, they would do idolatrous practices in, uh, in, in, in gardens, okay? They would, they would go into the wilderness and they would make, set up uh, uh, temp, uh, they would set up, uh, so I'm looking for, so, uh, altars of idols, excuse me. So, it tells you that in Hosea, the fourth chapter, I believe, around about verse 12 and 13, day on down. So I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 65 and verse 2. I have spread out my hands all day unto rebellious people, which walketh in a way that is not good after their own hearts. Okay, so they deny the way that the Lord told them to be obedient unto him. All right, how he wants us to offer sacrifices spiritually. They deny that, okay, and they go after the rudiments of the world, okay? You give me Colossians 2 and 8. Okay, JB. Uh, verse 3, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. All right, if I make, do you mind if I bring that scripture out? Okay. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get that since I quoted it, Hosea 4th four, uh, four chapter. All right, goes into that. Just bear with me for a sec. Okay, I got it. The book of Hosea chapter 4 and verse 12. Okay, it says, my people ask counsel at their stocks. And a stock is like a, a, the root of a tree. Okay, it says, Hosea 4 and 12, my people ask counsel at their stocks. And their staff declare unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err. Whoredom meaning idolatry. And they have gone a whoring from under their God. They sacrificed upon the tops of the mountains and burned incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms. These are different types of trees. Because the shadow thereof is good. Okay, the shadow thereof is good. What, what's the shadow of idolatry in today's time? All right, following behind Esau, Edom, and his ways. Okay? Because the, 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 uh, when, when, when you wish, uh, worship his false gods, you're part of the society. It feels good to be accepted by America, by the great. All right? You get benefits for that. Okay, you know, uh, 
You get Christmas gifts and all these kind of different things. Okay, so I'm gonna read that again. Hosea 4 and 13, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore, your daughter shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. So he put a, he put a punishment upon us saying, okay, because you, all right, the men as the daughter of Zion have committed whoredoms by worshiping other gods, I'm gonna cause your women to be out of order and they're gonna commit whoredom against you, all right? But uh, just to bring out that point, okay, that the, guard, the, uh, the, the idol worship in the gardens is talking about how they would uh, set up different um, moistens truck of body. All right, they would set up uh, different uh, altars to idols in the wilderness, okay? That's what that's going into. Can you jump down to verse 17? Yeah, Hosea 4 and 17. Okay, yep. Hosea 4 and 17. And it reads, it says, it says, Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. Yeah, Ephraim is referring to the northern kingdom, the modern day uh, so-called indigenous, okay? Uh, uh, including the actual tribe of Ephraim being the modern day Puerto Ricans. And our people are, and, and, and our people, including the Northern Kingdom, okay, and otherwise known as Ephraim, okay, within the context of prophecy, are heavily drawn into idols, and that's why they 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 they, they uh, feed off of this this time to justify worshiping these idols, uh, unbeknownst to them or not, okay, because that's a part of that that's a part of why we went, that, why we have curses bestowed upon us, man, okay, including right. worshiping our oppressors and our gods when you read Jeremiah five and nineteen, you see that because I mean, that's we you know because 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 of the generations upon generations of. Uh, 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 colonization and indoctrination, okay, by the hands of our enemies, including our arch nemesis, our main enemy, Esau Edom, the subclan white man, okay, because once again, these these tradi these traditions are are really man-made traditions that have nothing to do with the Heavenly Father, man. All right. Brother, uh, you bring a precept out, brother Lawrence. Colossians two and eight. Colossians two and eight, and it says, "Beware, lest not lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit." after the tradition of man, after the, the rudiments of the world, and not after Jehovah Shai. Right, right. So beware lest any man spoil you through the philosophies and vain traditions of this world, okay? And not after Jehovah Shai. Okay, so that, that's, and that's what most people are up under. They're under that spell. Okay, they're under the spell and the, the wine philosophies of Esau Edom, man, okay? Which is why they celebrate, you know, these different pagan holidays. They make it seem as something that's, it's fun, it's festive. Okay, this is just part of being of the world. Okay, that's part of that. Uh, that's part of that shadow. Okay, of the trees that I was reading about in Hosea four and thirteen. All right, yep. and then when you look at word of rudiments, it's uh, it goes into uh, primary or fundamental principles. Okay, you know, and, and a synonym for that is science. So science means uh, knowledge. Right. Okay, what is Esau's knowledge is predicated off of sensual, devilish wisdom. It says in Saint James three and fifteen. Yep. All right, and, and, and Halloween is very indicative of that, man. All right, which 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 describes these wicked traditions. But this is uh more meat on that Saint Mark seven. I got a precept as well. Okay, yeah, yeah this is uh back in Saint Mark seven and seven. It says, "How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men." You see, that's you know, so they, 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 uh, Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, and uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Christmas, which is uh, 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 you know the the uh, uh, the Saturnalia uh, festival, you see what I'm saying? Uh, Thanksgiving, which, which Thanksgiving commemorates the slaughter of, of, of the, the Northern Kingdom, specifically Tribe of Gad, that the modern day Native Americans, okay, is all, all slap in the face of our people, man. Okay, and that's why through Esau's uh, Edomite uh, curriculum, they taught us in these scholastic school institutions, okay, that they call schools. It was really, it was, it was really to keep us asleep and to keep us conditioned to worship him and keep his ways, man. This is St. Mark 7 and 8. It says, For laying aside the commandments of the Most High, Yahweh, ye hold the tradition of men as a washing of pots and cups. St. Mark 7 and 8 from the beginning. It says, For laying aside the commandments of the Most High, Yahweh, ye hold the tradition of men as a washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And what are our people doing right about now? They're washing pots and cups, preparing a keep the feast to uh to satan mm -hmm. all right through through, through these uh, uh pagan idols man okay yeah. mm -hmm. including santa muerte that's prevalent over there in mexico okay all right you know uh uh uh, uh you know you know you, you once again you got the adonai winged horn demon okay yeah. referring to the, the lord okay because the word adonai is you know is uh, uh uh you know really in hebrew is out of one 
So you see, so our people have been indoctrinated to, to, to keep the ways of the heathen. And that's why we were we were commanded to be severed from the heathen nations to avoid adopting their ways. Yep. All right, a little bit more meat on here. Okay. St. Mark 7, 9, it says, And he said it to them, Full well ye reject the commandment of the Most High Yahweh, that ye may keep your own tradition. You see, in, 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 uh, St. Mark 7, 9. Okay, yeah. You know, and that, and that, and that is, uh, <laughs> today's is, Right indicative of that, man, and it is in which you know this precept essentially breaks itself down in that sense. Bring that up one more time. Con St. Mark 7 9. It says, And he said unto them, Full well, you reject the commandment of the Most High, Yahweh, that ye may keep your own tradition. So, Halloween, you know, uh, you know, kept in the so called Hispanic culture, Dia de los Muertos, you know what I'm saying, uh, modern day All Hallows Eve, okay, uh, and, and the worshiping of the, the, the Lord of the Dead, Samhain. Okay, which Halloween further originates back to to the time of the wicked Celtic uh, uh, priests. Okay, where they would they would uh, they would also uh, sever human heads. Okay, uh, uh, as part of the sacrifice, and that's what uh, uh, the jack o' lanterns originates back to. You said See? that was Mark seven and nine. Con, read that one more time. I'm sure. Con, this is Saint Mark seven and nine, and it says, and he said unto them, for well you reject the commandment of the Most High Yahweh, that ye may keep your own tradition. Okay, the, the, the traditions that are the rudiments of this world, the principles, okay, of the standard of, of living, right. okay, mm -hmm. uh, through uh, Esau's wine of uh, pleasing the flesh on behalf of that, another snare of Esau Edom by, uh, uh, which is that false perception living by pleasing the flesh. Okay, that's what all these traditions, uh, modern day traditions, and, uh, 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 you know, of men, uh, okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, um, support, okay, the, 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 the pleasure of the flesh. Okay, these people justify getting drunk and worshiping the God of reveling and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, uh, wine as in Bacchus and these other guys, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, it says uh, St. Mark 7 and 10. And for Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso cursed father and mother, let him die to death. Right, so that's part of the commandments. But I, I really want to focus on the aspect, you know, of that priest where it mentioned death. Because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is the God of the living. Yeah. And not the God of the dead, all right? It says here in uh, St. Matthew 22, uh, okay, St. Matthew 22 and uh, 32, okay? And, uh, and it reads, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. The Most High Yahweh is not the God of the dead, but of the living. That's right. And yet you got our people, mainly the Northern Kingdom. Okay, Ephraim mentioned in Hosea 4, 17, referencing, commemorating death right now, man. That was Matthew 22 and 2? Uh, 22 and 32. Yeah, you know, you know, so that, that, you know, and so, you know, because why? Our people are under the, 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 um, the vibration of death. By, make, right. by, by making that covenant with death, you know, spoken about in Isaiah 28 and 15, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Can you read that out, Bob Shaw? Isaiah 29 and 9. 29 and 9. Con. Yeah. Con. Yeah. Isaiah 29 and 9. Con. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, 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 they stagger, but not with strong drink. You know, you know, off that wine, uh, fornication, man. Okay, you know that 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 modern day Western philosophy, which is the context what that wine is talking about, right? The the vain philosophies of That's deceit. Right. Uh, the, the, the rudiments of this world, the, the vain traditions of this world, man, okay, that, that have been sensationalized, you know, through, you know, uh, you know, through Esau's rulership, including through his modern-day uh, uh, Roman Gregorian calendar, okay? I'm not got a you. Okay, I, I got a few real quick. Um, I want to read this out of the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12 because this goes, this isn't a law on how you're not supposed to follow up with the ways of the heathen, uh, celebrating the way that they worship. Okay, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 29. It says, When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess, the land, to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Okay, so it says, don't inquire and look at how the other nations serve their gods and say, you know, I'm going to do the same. Okay, oh, see, Esau, he puts up Christmas trees. That's how he worships God. How come we can't do that? The Lord said, don't do that. All right, he said, don't worship the same way that they, that they worship. 
I'll, I'll bring it up because I because I already gotten hold of something. I'll do it. Uh, uh, De Deuteronomy, page twelve and verse thirty-one. Now, thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Okay, hmm. so he said after the after the ways the heathens worship their gods, do not follow them in that. Okay, you need to do exactly as I tell you to do, which goes you know goes further to that point that. Okay, we're supposed to worship the Lord the way that he wants us to do it. Okay, not the way that, that we see other people doing it. That's one problem with Jake. Jake has always uh, 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 fell behind the different nations that they were scattered around. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they and they started worshiping the way that they told them to. Okay, they, they took after the customs of the heathens. This is Exodus 23 and verse 2. All right. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Okay, so I shall not follow a multitude to do evil. So you see, everybody else in the world, okay, is, is doing what they want to do. But the, uh, the Lord, Yahweh, he said that the, uh, the, uh, the, the way that leadeth unto, unto death is wide. That's the wide gate. But the way that leadeth unto eternal life is very narrow. And few there be that find it. Okay, so you see the rest of the world doing what they do. You, probably, you, you should go the opposite way, man. Okay, if the rest of the world is, uh, is uh, celebrating Halloween, Okay, things stealing, Christmas, okay, which is Saturnalia, all right, the worshiping uh, white Jesus, Allah, Buddha, the Hindu goddess Shiva, then you know that's not the way, okay? Because I uh, John 14 and 26, it says, the Lord will send you another, another comforter, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So the whole world doesn't know the Lord. Very few people in the, on the earth actually know the Lord, man. Very, very few people. And the evidence of that is the spirit, okay? They, they, have, they have the Holy Spirit to be able to break down prophecy, Okay, to, to do the work of the Lord, okay, that they're bearing fruit. Okay, that's the whole point. That's the whole reason why he he, he chose he chose men out of the world. Okay, so that they can go forth and bear fruit. That's and, what we, uh, sorry, Salak. That's what we need to acknowledge the birds in the sky and, 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 and the fishes of the sea. Yeah. You know, we need to be like that salmon, you know, mm -hmm. swimming against streams. Swimming yeah, swimming yeah, against yeah, the yeah. stream, yeah. Like, like that 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 bird, you know, and they you're born twice, you know. Right, right. It, it gives up. The bird gives out uh, birth to to, a, to an egg, mm -hmm. and when you're born again, it's you hatch off of that that egg, you know. Right, right. And that's why they're perfect examples. Yep, yep. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still holding that uh, Psalms 91? Sure do. Okay, before you get that, I'm gonna read this again, going back to what I read earlier, Hosea the fourth chapter, going into the shadow, right? The shadow of idolatry. This is uh, Hosea chapter four and verse um 13. It says, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms, okay, which was, that's their, the different trees they were, they would go and they would set up altars to their false gods in the wilderness. It says, because the shadow thereof is good, all right, the shadow thereof is good. So people, it feels good to commit idolatry. It feels good to sin. You know, you go, when we used to go to the Christian church, you go up in there, everybody's all crying and stuff and you feel a release. But what, what is that release? Okay, it's, it's really, it's really uh, as it says in Jeremiah, the 14th chapter, they've healed, this, they healed the hurt of my, uh, the daughter of my people slightly saying, peace, peace. But it's not really true healing because once you leave that, those, that building, okay, you're still the same person. You have, nothing has really changed on the inside. You still have not received the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit only comes from the hearing of the truth. Okay, but the, they, they enjoy that because the shadow thereof is good. We have to cast off the shadow of this world. Okay, and put on the shadow of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Go ahead and read Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. Right. He that, he that hides in the secret place of the Lord, which the secret place of the Lord is in these scriptures. Okay? This is the spiritual arc right here. Okay, he that he that abided under the shadow of the Almighty. All right, keep reading. Verse two, Psalm ninety-one. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Right, right. So, I will say of the Lord, He is my He is my refuge. Of Him I will trust. You got to come out of the shadow of the world and its idolatry. Okay, just like the children of Israel, uh, they were under the shadow of of. The idolatry in the wilderness you got to come out of that shadow and abide in the shadow of the almighty because that's where that's where you're going to be safe at that's where your salvation is going to come from all right 
Yeah, yeah, I got a pre-show on the one you quoted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Read it. Read it out real quick. Uh, this is Second Ezra, it's twelve and thirty-six. You know, the pre-show you quoted. You know about you know fleeing shot of this world. This is uh, Second Ezra, it's twelve, and I'm gonna start at verse. Uh, let me see. Oh, and by the way, I just wanna I want y'all to see that that uh, uh we're supposed to lead by example. All right, taking notes. Okay, I always, I always have this notepad with me whenever I hear scriptures I don't know. Even if it's scriptures I do know, I write them down in this book, all right? Because then yeah, if you, if you, if you want to come back to it later, you know where to find it, okay? So you got to be uh, studying diligently. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved, okay? A workman, that, a workman uh, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to take notes, okay? And we're not exempt from that. Just because we're teachers, I also, when I hear brothers bring out scriptures and breakdowns, I'm, I'm taking notes on it to sharpen my sword. Okay, so I just want to say that. Now, this is Second Ezra chapter two and verse uh, thirty-six. It says, "Flee the shadow of this world; receive the joyfulness of your glory." I testify, my Savior, openly. That's Second Ezra two and thirty-six. Come, and by us testifying, our Savior, you shall openly. You know, we're we're uh, afraid to tear down strongholds and stumbling blocks, led by the Holy Spirit of Yahweh by Shemir Shai. And this, is why, and this is why this grieves the enemy, okay? Pursuing the Sirach 30 and 3, because we're being used by Yahweh, by Shemesh, by Shemesh HaKadosh, okay, to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to teach our people the ways of the scriptures, man. You know, for the, for the Book of Remembrance, as it says in Malachi uh, 3 and 16, okay? To, to cause our people to remember their ancient Hebrews by heritage, man, and return uh, back to our, to our power by cleaving them to our power and, uh, through his righteousness, okay? Fleeing the shadow of this world, which is of iniquity, compound right. sin. Right, okay. right, right. These, these devils try to make a, 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 you know, living off of, you know, and a profit off of, man. That's another. That's another aspect of it as well, where these devils are, uh, they really, they really uh, generate a lot of income off of these, pop, these folly pagan holidays, man. Right, right. Okay. Yep. So it's all a part of the car. It's all a part of uh, carnality. It's all part. Of, it's all. It's all. It's all about uh, pleasing the flesh. Okay. To, to, and that's why uh, at least Apostle Paul said, uh, you know, uh, uh, what that scripture says free youthful lust mm. okay and another precept right. that comes to mind when he said when i was a man i speak when i said so when, when i was a child i spake as a child you know when i became a man i put away childish things right right you know uh we lose the first corinthians 13 11 if i'm not mistaken it sounds about right you know but just to expand you got something up? yeah well god gives them a reprobated mind yeah yeah there's romans uh one in 28 they don't, they don't care they just yeah. want to form part of something kind of. as long as they they're part of something doesn't matter what what cost. Yeah, know? so they can they can be they can they can yeah. seek they can they can be beneficiaries of that validation of the world. Right. right. You know, you know, you know, like you know, and that's why real quick expand on that. Uh before we bring this out, I just bring this out real quick. In Proverbs one and ten, it says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Mm. Okay, and then a part of that enticement is, you know, the the uh the lust, you know, to the women. They get a, they get a kick off of the day, you know, they 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 get to really justify their whoredom. Okay, through their, their uh, promiscuous uh, outfits and whatnot. Okay, the cleavage y'all out, camel toe showing, tight dresses and, and, and pants and whatnot. They got dress, their kids dressing the same way. Kind, kind, kind. You see that? So it, yeah, it's still in their innocence. Kind. That's why it says in Isaiah the third, uh, third chapter, it says, uh, it says, uh, women, uh, children, children are oppressors and women rule over them. Kind. And those that lead thee cause my people to err. Okay. Yeah, Isaiah 3 and 9. Yep, yep, because we, we live in a matriarchy. All right, and Esau set it up that way purposely. All right, in, in this society, the authority of the of the man is completely undermined. Okay, the Lord set up, He set up the men to be the spiritual leaders of the household, so that the children wouldn't fall into the ways of the world. Okay, and Esau knows that we're really the only defense, you know, uh, uh, for the women and the children spiritually, because the Lord is dealing with the men first. All right, you yeah, actually got that one. Salaka. Babylon puts uh, Salaka, but no, you get. Yeah, go ahead. You finish your thought. Yeah, Babylon puts uh, women on a pedestal yep. Yep. and suppresses men to the fullest, put their foot on the neck. Toxic masculinity, all that crap. Yep. Con, con, con. All right. And yep. that's why a lot of these, these pagan holidays, like uh, uh, All Hallows Eve, Modern Day Halloween, Easter, uh, you know, Mother's Day is based off of Queen of Heaven, Semiramis worship, where they use the woman to propel their wickedness. You know, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you, you know, like uh, uh, with Easter reminds me of, uh, you know, the, the Playboy Bunny. You know, it was basically, you know, it was like the, the image of, uh, you know, Hugh Hefner's Playboy, you know, franchise or whatever, you know, that little thing. You see that? So they, 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 they further use these women, okay, to further generate income, right? Uh, for the lines of with this precept, uh, to, to correctly quote it, 
is uh, Isaiah 3 and 12 as opposed to Isaiah 3 and 9 I, I mentioned. So select you for that. But as Isaiah 3 and 12, it says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. All my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, meaning to go, to go astray from the Lord. It says, to destroy the way of, the, of thy past. And that's that straight and narrow path of righteousness of pleasing the help by Shem and Shai. Yep. Okay, that this world is not, that this world is not, does not support, you see. But, uh, got some up? Yeah. Go ahead. So this is uh, Isaiah 44 and 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it, yea, or even my witnesses, is there a God beside me? Yea, there's, there is no God. I know not any. So the Lord said, um, you know, man has all his gods, you know, that he has uh, people ser serving all over the world. But God said, there is no other God. I'm the creator of all things. Right. I, I am God. I create good and I create evil. Even their gods, God created that. Mm -hmm. And they err in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding because they never um, took out the time to learn and know who God really is. So they serve in false gods. And then it says in Isaiah 44 and 9, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity and their detectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who have formed a God or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Right. Profitable for nothing. That's fire. Right. Yeah, you know, kind. Right. Yeah, that's just yes, flaming fire. What scripture is that? It's Isaiah 44, yeah. verse 8 to 9. Yeah, we got to be careful. Beautiful jealous scripture. is a jealous. Uh, God is a jealous God. Yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yep. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go and grab that real quick. Like the book of Judges, <laughs> chapter 2. Uh, Judges, chapter 2, and verse, uh, start at verse 12. It's like you said of verse 11. Uh, there's a lot of me here in this chapter. So um, I'm going to start at uh, Joel. It's like you. Judges 2 and 10. It says, And also all that generation were gathered into their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord Yahweh, mm -hmm. nor yet the works which he had been, which like which he had done for Israel, because you got the many generations of us losing uh, who we are, That's our ancient right. heritage of uh, Hebrew Israelites, okay, through the curses, including in Deuteronomy 28 and 8. It's like Deuteronomy 28 and 28. But the Heavenly Father Yahweh said he would smite the minds of our people with madness. And so, you know, so so keeping the traditions of, of, of this world of, of uh, ancient, that originates back to ancient uh, customs of, of idolatry is of that madness, man. It's a part of that madness. But it's a Judges 2 and 11, it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord Yahweh and served Balaam. Okay? You know, which is, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, synonymous with a Baal. Okay? Uh, a, a deity, okay, of a pagan idol. Our people were... Of worshiping by sacrificing their own people and their infants too, man. Yep. Okay. You know that's why a lot of a lot of children come up missing around this time, man. Because these, these devils are worshiping the same gods that that were prevalent in ancient Egypt and Babylon. All right. That's why they erected that uh, 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 that that um, temple of uh, Baal. Okay. Back in 2016 in New York, I believe it was in Manhattan. Okay. And then when people got became privy to it, they changed the name from the from to an uh, Arch of Nemesis. Okay. I got a precept. God. I got a little bit more meat on here. Right. Judge, it says, Judges 2 and 12, it says, And they forsook the Lord, Yahweh, power of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them, mm -hmm. and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord, Yahweh, to anger. And we're doing mm -hmm. that, our people are doing that now. They're still doing that now. Verse 13 says, And they forsook the Lord, Yahweh, and served Baal and Asterisk. All right, and Asterisk is what Easter goes back to. All yes. right. Verse 14, and the, and the anger of the Lord, Yahweh, was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. They were mainly Esau, Edom, the Edomites. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies roundabouts, uh, so that they could not any longer stand before the enemies. Right? Yep. You know, and I mean, that's continuing to this day. And I got, I got to add on for that. What scripture was that? Uh, Judges uh, uh, chapter 2, verses 10 to 14. I got to add on to that. Go this on. is the book of Psalms, chapter 106. Chapter, yep. 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 Psalms chapter, chapter 106 and verse uh, 33. It says... Because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Mm -hmm. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons 
unto their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. They were defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they, the enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Okay, and once again, it all goes back to that uh, uh, wickedness of idolatry, man. You got the Psalm 115? Go ahead and bring that up. And Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to Akim tuning in. Yep, Shalom. Thy brother Amraya, Ali Allah, Ari Allah, and Karatha Zayabadi. How about Shemisha Barakatam? How about Shemisha Barakatam? And we bring out that Psalms 115, start at verse 3. Psalm 115, verse 3. But our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he has pleased. Yep. Verse 4. Their idols are silver and gold, the works of man hands. They have mouth, they they have mouth, but they speak not. Eyes have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have have they, but they smell not. They have hands. But they handle not. Feel feet, but feet have they, but they walk not, neither speak thy mouth, their throat. Yeah, now that they speak through their throat, yep. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusts in them. Right, so so pretty much he's saying that these idols I have no power, okay? And 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 those that, that make them are like unto them. They have no power, okay? And all those that trust in them, two-thirds of people that are trusting in these idols are going to find out in the hard way in Jacob's trouble, all right, that there that there is no there's no salvation, okay, in these different idols that, that our people have been worshiping. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And our people uh, find themselves idolizing these things, and they don't realize that man made it to, to be able to eat something, you know, yeah. to have something to eat sell it just for merchandise pretty much right. yeah we right. got people over here it breaks you throw it in the ground your it's it'll crumble you know right right yeah they mm -hmm. can't they can't defend themselves yeah, exactly. that, that's definitely part of it in terms of you know the merchandising off of people's ignorance and uh and, and spiritually and, and ultimately through the spirit to turn the heart to, of, of the minds of jake israel away from worshiping yahweh by shimei yeah i actually got a precept on that a story on that in the scriptures i believe in acts the 14th chapter Okay, um, let me see. <sighs> Come on, man, I gotta, I gotta find it. Okay, go, go you, you brothers, go ahead and bring up the precepts. I gotta find this one. Here. I got a precept. Okay, go ahead and bring it up. All right, this is um, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. And it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And real quick, you know, a part of the commandments is not worshiping other gods. And clearly That's Halloween right. is, is 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 prevalent in, in, in that regard in terms of worshiping multiple gods, including mm -hmm. those, you know, some of the ones that are, you know, the many that were mentioned in, it, in this uh, in this epistle, man. Mm -hmm. Lord, uh, and this is 14. For God should bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good. Or whether it be evil so that this is conclusion the lord is saying telling man you can go out here and serve all these false idols that all these people are serving all over the world and doing all these um uh holidays it's not written in the holy scriptures serving false, false idols murder of american native americans and slavery of uh of african americans so-called african americans but God said he's going to bring all that into judgment in every secret work. Yep, yep. man. So whether you do, uh, whether, you, whether you do righteousness or, 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 or wickedness, there's going to be, there's going to be a recompense for that. Yep. So you have That's to right. choose wisely which side you're going to go with. Because like it says in Joshua 24 and 15, as for my house, we're going to serve the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemir Shai. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause, because if we go the opposite way on the left-hand side and follow the tradition of this world, you know, worship their gods, these, these vain, 
you know, mm -hmm. traditions, okay, uh, 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 you know, of sacrifice and, 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 and festivities and whatnot, okay, mm -hmm. you're, you're following the path of death, and death can uh, pursue you, like yeah, it says man. in Proverbs 13 21. Yep, I, I got a quick precept. All right, he brought, uh, he brought out, he brought out how, uh, how a lot of times they make a lot of money off of these uh, different uh, idols and all that stuff. This is a story from the book of Acts, the 19th chapter. An apostle Paul was in Ephesus. All right, he was uh, he was telling the Israelites there not to worship the goddess Diana because that was a heavy uh, idol that people were worshiping back then, the Queen of Heaven spirit. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, Acts, the 19th chapter. All right, and I'm gonna start at verse um, I'm gonna start at verse uh, let's see, verse 17. All right, it says, it says, um, actually, matter of fact, it's like you. Acts, I started Acts 19, and hang on, you know what, um, actually, okay, Acts 19 and verse 8, actually 6, 5, <laughs> Acts 19 and 5, it says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai, and when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came onto them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went to the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of the Most High. Because at that time, uh, you had you had different uh, false apostles okay, that were going out and saying that the uh, the resurrection of the Lord had already came. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Apostle Paul he was debating with them for three a period of three months and pretty much uh, uh, pushing down and destroying false doctrines. So when he left, he appointed Tim uh, Timothy to be a bishop over the church of Ephesus. That's where you get first and second Timothy from. All right, mm -hmm. but continuing on, it says, but when, di when diverse were hardened, when different men were hardened, believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus or Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, Yahawashai, both Jews and Greeks, and the Most High wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Okay, so the, the, Israelite, uh, the Israelites that were Jews that had stuck to the customs, they heard the word. And then also those Israelites that fell away, that become Hellenized, they heard the word as well. And they believed because they saw that the Lord was dealing with Paul and he brought miracles, all right, through Apostle Paul. Continuing on, it says, uh, Acts 19 and 12, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them and evil spirits went out from them okay so he was able to cast out evil spirits of people and heal people okay verse uh, 13 then certain of the vagabond jews exorcist took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the lord yahweh saying we adjure you by yahweh whom paul preached so some some wicked jews okay they they came and tried to pretty much steal the spotlight mm -hmm. all right they were like oh hey we got the, we got that same power but they weren't sent by the lord mm -hmm. just like you have two-third prophets today that are going out there and they're deceiving the people, but they weren't sent by the Lord, man. That's right. Okay, and we know because of their, their doctrines and they, they have a, a wicked spirit on them. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing on though, it says, and there were seven sons of Siva, a Jew, and the chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahweh I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? So they said, the evil spirit like, I don't know who you guys are. I know, I know Apostle Paul. Because the demons, they know our names, man. If you're of the elect, they know who you are. They know who you are. All right. That's right. Continuing on, it says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Yahweh was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many also of them which used various arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Okay, so uh, people started throwing their idols and, and burn, burning their idols. Mm. All right, so lucky, I know I'm, I'm long-winded, but I, I wanna get to the point. Mm. I just couldn't sure, find right, it, so I, I couldn't find it, so I'm just Spirit reading the whole thing. Go right ahead, bro. It says, so, the, so, the, so mightily the, the, the word of God, and the, mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. It says, and after these things were, were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to, to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, there I must also see Rome. All right, and I'm going to skip down. Okay, uh, actually, no, I'm going to keep reading because I'm almost there. It says, so he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Arist Aristotus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about the way. 
For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small grain unto the craftsmen. So, okay, Apostle Paul, he, he appointed Timothy and Aristotus to, to, uh, to watch over Ephesus, okay? And, and, and then a, a silversmith, someone, a silversmith is someone who, who makes um, uh, um, like statues and stuff out of silver or gold, mm -hmm. okay? And so he stirred, he stirred up strife, okay? He stirred up uh, 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 pretty much contention amongst the, amongst the people of Ephesus. It says, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. We have our wealth by making idols unto Princess Diana, our goddess Diana. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also the temple of the, great, of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is the God, great is Diana and the Ephesians. Okay, so for them, it wasn't about the truth. They were mad because, because uh, Apostle Paul was calling out, was calling out these uh, false prophets for idolatry. And they were saying, we're gonna lose money. If if if, if, if Apostle Paul gets every way, everyone to turn away from idol worship, we're not gonna be able to make these shrines anymore. We're not gonna be able to make these uh, statues of, of Goddess Diana. Alright? So I just, I just want to bring that out, okay, going into how you had false prophets back then, all right, and, and wicked men that, that were trying to make merchandise of the truth and off of idolatry, the idolatry, the foolishness of our people, man, okay? This is the book of Acts 14, verse 7. And there they preached the gospel, and the, uh, Salakia, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent, impotent. Oh, that's a uh, certain man at Lystra and impotent. 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 And, yeah, impotent, meaning he couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Handicapped. Yeah, he was handicapped, right, exactly. In his feet, being a, a cripple from his mother's womb. So he was like that from his birth, right? Right, yeah, he never he had never walked before, right. And this, what he's reading, this is going into how idolatry was so heavy back then, around the time of Apostle Paul, that, that uh, when, when they went to go preach, uh, the people, the Israelites were saying, oh, this is Mercury and Jupiter that has came on down to us because our people were worshiping the planets just like they do today. Right. All right. Uh, uh, Serapis Christus, which is that fake god that Ptolemy Soter uh, created during the, um, the Pt Ptolemaic dynasty of ancient Egypt when the Greeks had taken over. Okay, Serapis Christus became Zeus and Zeus, in the, that was the Greek version, in, in the Roman Empire became Jupiter. Okay, so they had, so when Apostle Paul was going out there preaching and performing miracles, they thought that Jupiter, which was their chief god, had came down in the form of Paul, okay? And we're going to read what Paul said unto them. So, so, yeah, so Being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. All right, so a man that had never been, had never walked from birth, okay, when he, when he heard the words of Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit came up over him, all right, and he was able to walk again, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so certain men had spiritual power back then, and that's going to return again today, okay? But our people, they were so blinded by idolatry that they thought that Apostle Paul was their fake god Zeus or Jupiter. Or they didn't, they didn't, they didn't attribute it to the Heavenly Father that was the one that was giving them the power to do the miracles. Okay, so keep reading. Yeah, yeah, just like uh, Peter, right? His shadow would even heal the sick. Right. That was actually how I believe. What was that? Was that Peter? He said his shadow would heal the sick. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure that account. But I, 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 I think I think he's talking about with a woman who just who just like begged to try to even touch it. How was garment? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, you're talking about oh, a different one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we we'll, we'll have to go into that later. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Acts 14, verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, Laconia, the gods are come, are come down to us in the likeness of men. Yep, keep reading. And they called Bar Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul 
Mercury is because he has, he was chief. the chief speaker. So they thought that he was Mercurius. Paul thought they, they thought that he was uh, Jupiter. Jupiter. Right. right. Yeah, Jupiter and Mercury because uh, they worship the planets. Most most of this idol worship goes back to the worship of planets because why? The heathens they always worship the creation more than the creator, mm. as it says in Romans the first chapter. I had to read and expound on that. That's why a lot of these holidays around. The, the different the different the transitions of the season like the, the winter solstice the summer solstice the spring equinox where they they worship the constellation of the stars like it speaks about in jeremiah 10 chapter all right and that's why jeremiah 10 chapter you know uh you know the traditions of keeping christmas now quote unquote christmas okay is associated with sun god worship okay let's expand on that so, keep, keep reading no, you're good. You're at Acts 14 and verse 13. Acts 14, verse 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen, oxen, yeah, oxen, and the garlands onto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with people. Right, so they, even, they had a priest of Jupiter. They had an actual wicked priest that was dedicated to to Jupiter, to a false god. Okay, which today, all right. Uh, today would be Jesus Christos, Isus Christos. That's, that's what it formed. That's what it turned into as time went on. Start, started off with Serapis Christus, and then you had Zeus, Jupiter, and then Isus Christos, which was formed around 300 AD in the Council of Nicaea. Okay? All right, me... That's what they got, the name Christ, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's Greek. Yep. Yep. So it reads on um, Acts 14, verse 14, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out, The same, sirs, why do ye these things? Oh, my God. you right, verse 15. So, oh, so, so they, they rent their clothes. They, so when they saw that they were, you know, doing this idolatry, they tore, their, they tore their clothes and said, People, sirs, why do you do these things? Why are you worshiping a false god? Why are you worshiping Jupiter and Mercury? I right, keep reading. So why do these things? We are also men of like passion with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. The yep, yep, Yahweh. Yep, Yahweh, yep, Yahweh, Yahweh. Which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Right, so, so Apostle Paul, he said, he said, why do you do these things? And he, he deplored them. He said, turn unto the living God, which made heaven and earth. Why are you worshiping the creation and not the creator? It's pretty much what Apostle Paul was saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's exactly what we're telling you. Okay, because all these different pagan holidays, like the one today, mm -hmm. right, that people are getting ready to celebrate, is in veneration of a false god, an idol. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so you know, that's what we, we come out here week in and week out to, to give you warning these things, man. Because mm -hmm. these things, right, which is a sin... Okay, it's, it's gonna lead to death. All right, if, if you if you worship idols, it's gonna lead to you being deleted. It's it's specifically forbidden in the law. Which let me go ahead and get that right quick. Okay, the book of Exodus, chapter twenty, and I'm I'm gonna get verse three. I believe it is. Okay, Exodus twenty and three. It says, "Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, like the like the goddess Diana. They had the silversmith making." Uh, shrines and statues of the goddess Diana. People are bound down to that, man. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. That's right. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thou thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments all right so you see that dichotomy with the lord okay he said i'm a jealous god so you worship other gods you celebrate the customs of the heathens the different pagan holidays by right, the rudiments of this world all right, he said i will visit you unto the the third and fourth generation all right gonna close out yep it's romans 11 verse 4 i start at verse 3 it says lord yahweh by shim they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars and I am left alone and they seek my life. Because, you know, going back to the time of uh, Elijah the prophet in uh, 1 Kings, the account in 1 Kings 18 chapter, where 
it, you know, he he uh, uh, uh you know he he was led by Yahweh by Shemeshah to slay the prophets of all, right? All these these mighty prophets of all pushing false doctrine through the coming devised fables and damned heresies will also be put to death. Okay, by the plagues of Yahweh by Shemeshah, or including that the ultimate plague, right? That that great millstone of thermonuclear destruction for those who take that that chip, or the MOTB implant. This is Romans 11 and 4. It says, But what saith the answer of the Most High Yahweh to him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of all. All right, the elect. All right, verse 5 says, Even so then at this present time also there's a remnant according to the election of grace. All right, so that's what we come out here to fish for. It says in Jeremiah 16, chapter 3, elect and elect only. Yep. All right. That's it. That's right. Oh, well. Yeah, he got to get through. All right, let's go, let's yeah. go, let's go. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and close out. So, That's right. okay, just a quick midweek camp. Unfortunately, we're oppressed for time today, uh, but Lord's will, it was still edifying to the elect. So as always, okay, we want to give our praise, our honor, and our glory unto our power. Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shai, by Shem, and And double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you should say. I keep, keep pushing, keep believing, and keep faith. Regardless of whether people hear, whether they forbear, until next time, shall it warm and apply for ball. Beautiful lesson. Beautiful lesson on Hebrews that dollar. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living God.